Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that little glimpse of the sunrise as I was coming over the bridge this morning. Uh, I'm back down on the boat. I'm going to start this morning before it gets too hot. I'm going to bed um, the deck hardware, specifically the uh, interstacial sheet. Uh, that's the place I got to start today. Uh, so I've got some uh, bedded butyl tape, and I went and picked up some uh, nuts and washers that I needed to uh, create a small backing plate on the bottom side of the deck, and then ultimately install that. So try and do that before it gets too hot, and then. Um, and then I'm also going to work on actually bedding the glass down into the butterfly hatch. I started it yesterday. Unfortunately, the sealant I had was actually roofing sealant and not glass sealant. I grabbed the wrong tube out of storage. So I'm not going to go back and get it. I'm, I'm just going to buy another tube. I'll probably use the same stuff I've been using on the uh, glass on the coach house. So let's get started. Come on aboard. This is what I'm going to be bedding to start. You can see the four holes right here, and ultimately that's what's going to go into it. So. I'm gonna get those holes cleaned up and go grab the butyl tape. All right, so I'm gonna dry fit this and make sure all my bolts and whatnot fit down below. Yeah, see, it's a good thing I did. These, I drilled a small drill from the bottom. I need to do a slightly larger size here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna oval these holes out this way. When you're using butyl tape, it's a good way to do it. All you wanna do is a very slight angled edge here. Just a small place for the butyl tape to sink into. When I use butyl tape, that's the only brand I use, is Bed It. Uh, it's out of, um, oh, I'm gonna get the name wrong. I'll put a link down below in the description for where to get it. Um, I'm not affiliated with them, but this stuff is so good compared to what you might go get at like an RV store for like uh, camper windows. This stuff is really good. Um, and the website is a ton of great information. It's got a really weird address. It's like PB Main something. So I'll put a link down below for it. It even has good tutorials and videos on how to do bedding with this stuff. So, so we're going to start here just by applying the butyl tape to the back side of this. I'm doing my best to keep this so you can see it here. So I'm going to use more butyl tape than I need, which is fine. I can always just peel a little bit off of there and, and get rid of it, but I'd rather have plenty in my openings than not enough. Now what I do with this, is I actually wrap it around the screw head itself. I'm gonna do something odd here because I have a unique situation down below and the way these bolt in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put some around the screw head itself for a good bedding. You make sort of like a little snake and you just wrap it right around the screw head. This will push right up into the, the threads at the top as well as around the head itself. Stop that right about there. Again, I got it just wadded right up around the neck of this. All right, let's go take a look below. So when you're trying to do this by yourself, sometimes you got to get creative. I put the vice grips down below, and then I'm turning this here just to get them snugged up. Then I'll go down below with the uh, socket set and get it tightened up the rest of the way. I have the vice grips attached to the nut and I'm letting it hit up against the bulkhead to keep it from rotating all the way around. And each time I turn it, I can kind of hear it tapping it.
All right, so I've got those bolts bedded. As you can see, it was a little bit tricky to do with one person, but there's always a way. Tie a wrench to a piece of string around something, so if you drop it, it doesn't go into bilge. Uh, I held it in place uh, with a clamp, right? Just something to hold the wrench while I went up top and, and got it at least snug with a screwdriver. So there's usually a way to do it by yourself. Um, I went ahead and got that piece bedded up there. So after the staysail uh, sheet was bedded, it was now time to finish bedding the main sheet traveler. It seems to think this just sort of kicked my butt. Um, the frustrating part for me was I drilled the holes really small and then tried to use the screws to sort of create the threads through the wood as opposed to oversized drilling it a little bit. What that meant was that four inch thick hole from the top of the traveler through the block, uh, the teak block, through the deck, through the core, and through the beam above all had to be perfectly straight. And it wasn't, it was off by a millimeter or two and it was just hard to get them lined up. So I did end up um, drilling those out just a little bit bigger than the width of the threads uh, and then ultimately using butyl tape to bed them down in there. Uh, I'm short one washer and bolt so I need to run or one washer and nut I need to run over to the store and pick those up. Let me show you what it looks like from the bottom with most of it bedded. So you can see here on this stainless steel backing plate I have a washer and a nut, washer and nut. This one's actually just a pin to line everything up. It actually does not a bolt that goes all the way through. I have a washer and nut and I need to go get another um, washer uh, for this one and then I will end up drilling these two on the ends and putting them in there as well uh, just for extra safety it wasn't in there originally and it's probably fine the way it is I went ahead and got uh, the four pieces of glass bedded down in the butterfly hatch. I actually ran out of sealant as I was just doing my final coat, so I'm going to have to go get another tube of that, but uh, all the adhesion should be on. I just have the cleanup smeared edge along the top, the smooth edge to get uh, to get done. Uh, and then I'm still going to have to, um, yeah, I might actually trim it off. If I've had a buy a whole other tube, I may actually trim it off square and then put tape on the glass so I can sort of lick my finger with the glove on it and wipe that um, caulk smooth and then while it's still wet peel the tape up and get a nice crisp line uh, man this stuff starts to gum up so quick in this heat that if you don't pull it off within 30 seconds it sort of stretches like gum and and then it doesn't give you that nice smooth edge you're ultimately looking for so I'll be trimming this up with a razor blade not the best but I'm gonna have to do it uh, the good news is I believe it's still gonna be bedded just fine secure wise right with an adhesive as well as the waterproof component of it but with that, I'm calling it a day a little early today. I think it's probably about noonish or so on Sunday, and I am uh, I'm heading home for a good shower. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. I'm going to be back down here in the yard in the morning. Um, there's some things that just still need to get done on the boat, and unfortunately nothing really got done this week. And uh, in the yard, I need to talk to Michael and see if there's any possible way we can get some progress on the scuppers, the through hull. He told me that uh, they were able to free it up, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was it, it's not turning off all the way. So... I'd like to come and meet with him and just kind of sit down and go over the final checklist. Uh, we've been doing a lot of it via text, probably not the most effective way to plan out the remaining tasks and timeline, but we definitely still have a little bit to do. we got to finish connecting the last of the return fuel lines. Um, we've got to do the fiberglass work in the scuppers. Uh, I need that one through hull redone. They're going to lift the boat out and do some touch-up paint because there was a spot where it had a little dock rash from one of the storms, the way it was tied up. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's a bit of work to still be done, um, and we need to get uh, the forklift and get the, all the flooring components back down onto the boat. Uh, you know, ideally, I was planning on trying to sail it out next weekend, and I'm really concerned at my ability to do that, given where we sit with the work still left. Uh, Nick still has fabrication work to do. He says it's two days worth of work historically. 
two days equals significantly longer, right? It's two days of effort, but that doesn't mean that I'm next in line or he can get to the boat or, or weather cooperates or he's just ready to do that versus some other job. So it's time to start, um, time to start getting down to crunch time and doing a little project management, I'm afraid. And I hate that because everybody here has been really, really nice. And it means I, I have to be a little more direct and it's not always my style. So uh, away we go. And if you guys see this before I have the discussion, my apologies up front. Good morning, everybody. It's been a bit of a slow week. I didn't get a lot done uh, earlier this week. I just wasn't feeling well, and I didn't do any work on the boat for a few days. Uh, but what I want to get back to is the butterfly hatch. Um, I want to finish getting the uh, the sealant trimmed up. I bedded these windows down, and while I'm confident in their sealing ability, right, how well the glass is adhered, I really don't like the way it looked. I tried to do the classic, um, you know, put tape on each side, apply the caulk, you know, lick your fingers with the glove and smear the, the uh, I used 4000, 3M4000 instead of 4200 in this case, it's a UV protect and flexible one, really good for glass. So I used that one and normally you, you kind of rub that, you blend that corner edge in and then while it's wet you peel the tape up and, and you get a nice clean edge. I don't know if I waited too long, um, you know, I did one pane of glass and then peeled the tape off and, and that five minutes it took or so was too long, or if it was too hot and this stuff started to gum up, but what happened was the sealant started to almost get a little bit gummy and as I pulled the tape up, rather than just peeling up a nice clean line, it sort of stretched it like it would chewing gum. Uh, and I ended up with a lot of like little, I don't know, little things hanging off of it. So it just is not a clean look at all. What it's leaving me to do now is take a straight edge, make a nice trim line with uh, the straight edge and then use a straight edge razor and scrape uh, off the glass so I get a good clean line. So I'm about to do that now. I also, um, I ran out of sealant uh, uh, about two thirds of the way through this. So on the last, uh, t the last t uh, two panes of glass, I essentially put enough sealant in the corners to get them sealed and bedded in place. And I'm going to uh, try again, a slightly different approach this time, uh, same outcome, but I'm gonna put that tape down. I'm gonna do essentially just one of each side of the four sides of the window and then peel the tape up right away rather than try to do all four sides and see if that helps with the gumminess. If not, I'll end up trimming those with a razor blade just like I did in the others. So let me show you what it looks like uh, and then I'll, I'll get to cleaning these things up. So here's the overall frame, and you can see I chose uh, I chose the white trim. Uh, in the end, I might have I might regret that. I maybe I should have used black, but I decided to go with the white. Um, I like this 3M 4000 UV protect and sealant, so uh, it's what I had. It's what I used. So anyway, here's here's what it looks like, and and here's what I meant. If you look closely at this, I'm looking straight down on the glass. You can see this upper edge here. It's not a very clean edge. So I'm going to take my razor blade. I'm going to trim that. Um, you can also see on the bottom side how I have this squeeze out here. It's, it's where the glass pushed down against it, and you, you can see it's a very flat edge, and it oozes out underneath. And I'll show the bottom side of that in a minute. Over here on this glass, I've already trimmed the bottom side of it. I still have to clean up the top side here, but I, I trimmed the bottom side. So let me go ahead and open this up, and I'll show you what I mean. So here's the one that I already uh, I already cleaned up and trimmed. And you know, if you if you notice right here, I had tape along the edge of this wood, and uh, and it, that allowed me to peel the tape off and keep any caulk or sealant from getting on the frame. But it did have some of this stuff oozed out, so I used a razor blade to just trim along here and remove it. I now need to do the same thing on this pane. This is the where I left off. Uh, and you can see this, uh, you know, there's a lot of squeeze out here, especially in these corners. So I'll just run a nice razor blade along here and I'll get this trimmed nice and flat and flush with the edge of the wood. Here's the other side of the hatch, and you'll notice, I, as I mentioned, I, I ran out of caulk, and I, I re recognized I was about to run out, so I decided to go ahead and adhere these at the four corners and make sure that the glass was bedded well, and then I can come back in later, and from the bottom side, I can run a bead of, of caulk along that and fill that entire gap, which should give me less waste, less squeeze out, and a cleaner finish, and then I'll do the same up top. The other thing I do is, when I'm bedding glass, what I want to avoid is I want to avoid the glass making a hard touch on any of the sides. Any vibrations in the boat potentially could crack the, the glass. So I use these small tile spacers. You, you can buy them online. You can buy them at a home repair store. Uh, and they're designed to lay down t with, when you're doing tile and you, you, it's for spacing them out. But I use these and I, I trim them with a razor blade and I just stuck them in place between the glass and the frame to give me the gap that I wanted. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look closely down here, I also had one sitting vertically like this, not horizontally, right there to give myself a quarter inch gap 
underneath this glass. Uh, and when I'll just, I'll, I'll take a pair of pliers and I'll pull that out of there now that that's set up. And then I can start caulking and cleaning that up. So definitely have some cleanup to do, uh, get started on it. So as you can see, I got a little bit of cleanup. I'm gonna get my razor blades out and just go ahead and get started on this and see if I can knock it out real quick. All right, I went ahead and trimmed all that up. It probably took about 20 minutes or so. I essentially used a ruler and a straight edge and I just drew a real close line on the very edge of the glass and then I used a scraper underneath it. So let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, so as you can see, the lines are a lot cleaner, a lot square. They certainly look better. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. And I still need to finish sealing this one up, but I've got to get some more of this 4,000. So I'm going to try this one more time as I put the sealant down here. I'm going to try and run a line of tape on the top of the glass this time, which I didn't do last time, thinking I would be able to scrape it up real easy. So I just finished taping off that hatch and doing a little bit of cleanup there in the storage shed. Uh, the marine store opens up just in a few minutes, so I'm going to run over there and grab another tube of that uh, 4,000 sealant. I'm actually going to seal it right here in front of the storage shed just because then I can load it into the car um, and it, it'll dry while I'm driving down to the boat. So it's a bit of a cheat, but it'll save me a little bit of time in the end. All right, so errands have been run. I picked up a new tube of 4,000 uh, 3M caulk and I'm about to apply this finish and put it in the car and take it on down to the boat. So I think the moral of the story is practice does really improve your work. Um, like a lot of things I do, frankly, there's four panes of glass. And on the fourth one, I feel like I really kind of had the process down. So um, that reason why the, the, the material was stretching is I was trying to do it too thick. What I did was if I put the tape on both sides of the joint and then I, I wet my finger at uh, the end of the glove and I smeared that uh, caulking down into it. Essentially, what I was doing is reducing it down to a very, very thin line. Uh, a thin thickness. When I then pulled the tape up, it pulled it as a nice straight edge. Uh, I'm going to show you the top side of the glass. Sadly, the bottom side still doesn't look great, but the top side does. Bottom side I'll trim with a razor blade. So here you can see, um, I've got this thing only two inches above the glass, so you're going to see the slight imperfections in it, but you can see how it looks rounded and there's a nice smooth edge along this part here as well as this part here. And I had tape on here and as you saw, tape on there. So when I peeled those up, that was nice and thin because I'd smooshed it down with my finger. So yeah, it looks good. Uh, you can see though, underneath the glass, it gummed there. So I'll be, um, I got a little set of love making love bugs right below the glass. Anyway, um, you can see where I'll have to trim underneath that, that caulk once it hardens, I'll just trim that with a razor. And the reason I'm going to trim it with a razor after it hardens is I, I don't want that to, I don't want to stretch the material or try and reshape it and potentially pull some of it out of the joint. What I'd rather do is leave it in there, have a nice, a nice good solid uh, adhesion and sealant, and then I can come back with a razor blade and just make a nice straight edge with it. It'll look fine that way. looks really horrendous right now, but in three hours, I'll be able to take the blade and, and smooth that right out. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Join us next week as we do a little bit of slip sailing. We paint a little bit more of the village and we get really close to getting the boat out of the yard. Thanks for watching, everybody. Again, if you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up and a like. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you all next week. Safe sailing.